This is the Mamiya RB67, which shoots in the 6.7 format, which is a bigger rectangle. Another reason you may want to consider this camera. We have a back which can be flipped. So right now it's shooting in landscape. Just by putting some pressure on it, I can switch it to portrait mode and back, which is helpful because this is a pretty large, heavy camera that might be easier to shoot with in a studio environment. To adjust the shutter speed and aperture, you do so on the lens. So I'm changing the shutter speed here, the aperture here. I'll pop up the viewfinder. Just like many medium format viewfinders, it'll be a little tougher to tell because this is an empty room that's being worked on. The image is flipped horizontally, which you will get used to relatively quickly. If you'd like to see the loop to get your focus perfect, I'm gonna just press this white button over here and it'll pop out so I can focus a little bit more easily and just see my image a bit more clearly. To focus, I'm gonna use this dial here and you can see that's changing. Like many medium format cameras, this does not have a built-in light meter. So I'm gonna show you how to work with this Kenko light meter. You start by turning on the power and it's defaulted to me to AMB or ambient mode, which is what I'd like it to be in. I'm gonna take a reading by pressing this button here. And it's saying that if with my time at one second, I could use an aperture of 16. I don't really wanna shoot with an aperture of 16, so I'm gonna press these rocker buttons to see, okay, well, if I wanted to shoot at an eighth of a second or a 15th or a 30th, what would the equivalent aperture settings need to be, which is really helpful. So this is one of the light meters we have. I talk about another light meter in the video for the Mamiya C330. So refer to that if necessary. Other things I wanna quickly point out about the light meter, you can change the ISO by pressing this button here. I also can change to two other modes, chord and non-chord. Chord, we may play with later when I show you how this camera could work in a studio setting. Okay, so I've got the film back off. I'm finding this lever here. And that's gonna allow this back to pop open. So when I do that, I'm able to see where I would put in my film. So pressing this button should make it easier to pull out this spool and move it to the other side. This is where you want the take up spool to be. So normally you will have to do exactly what I just did and move it over. All right, so I'm putting the film in the same way I did when I took out the spool. I'm having the backing paper come out on that left side, and then I'm gonna pull it around the back and make sure that the black side of the backing paper is facing out. That's gonna face the dark slide, so that's gonna face into my camera body. I'm gonna then keep pulling my backing paper around and putting that tab in the take-up spool on the other side, and just kind of like with 35 millimeter film, winding it up. All right, so here you see I'm trying to make sure that the tab is fully engaged in that take-up spool while I'm trying to advance the film slightly using that film advance lever. This is a lot like 35 millimeter. You can see I'm just trying to keep it engaged, lightly advance, and I'm waiting to see that start arrow on the other side. So that lets me know I'm ready to put my film cartridge back in its housing. So you can see I'm doing that here but I wanted you to get a cleaner view of how that looks. So notice I'm holding the housing with kind of the door facing to the left. I'm putting my cartridge back in. This is the way it's gonna fit together. And I need to just line things up carefully. Then I'm gonna close the door and really press it firmly back into place. So you should press it in and then close the lever. Here you can see the next stage of the process where I'm just advancing until I can see the number one in the frame counter window. So you have to advance a little ways. 
I want you to notice there, I can finally see a one. If I could see a red in the frame, that would mean I'd already exposed it. I haven't, so I don't see that red. One thing that I've noticed about this camera is it sometimes defaults to not fully unlock, so that lever isn't going all the way over to the left. So in order to re-trigger it, sometimes you need to press the lever I'm showing you right here in this video at the same time as you push that lever to the left. That allows me to fully unlock, so you should be able to see. Not only is it all the way to the left, but it's lifted, and I'm gonna do the same on the bottom. Once I do that, this is what I'm looking at, which is gonna make it much easier to take the camera back and put it on the camera. It should sit nicely in place. And then when I lock it in, I should be able to solidly feel that connection happen. All right, so I'm shooting in core mode. I'm going to point the Luma Dome, which is this white half dome towards my lens. And I'm gonna press this button to take a reading, which should also trigger the light, which it does. And you can see I got a reading of F22 with 1 1 25th of a second. I'm getting ready to take an exposure. It's a little easier to see the reversal if you look, the bowl is actually facing left, but when we look in here, it's facing right. So I've just put energy into framing up my shot how I want it, and I'm ready to actually make a capture. The shutter is in a pretty logical spot, but with all of my equipment, it's kind of hiding. This is where my shutter button is. My camera actually won't take a shot yet, and that is because I have the dark slide in. So this camera, because it has changeable backs, you need to pull out this thing called the dark slide to be able to actually take an image. So I'm gonna pull this out all the way, put it aside, and I should be ready to go. So now with the dark slide out, I'm gonna hit my shutter. And you should see because I have this cord attached to my lens, even though it's an analog camera, I'm triggering my lights just by clicking the shutter. So now I will advance to the next frame and I should be ready to shoot again. So I'm gonna take another exposure to show you just how I advance. So if I advance here, I'm not actually seeing my frame counter move. What I need to do on this particular camera back is actually advance on the back itself. So it's starting at three, then I'm going to advance it to four. So otherwise <clears throat> you're just capturing multiple exposures.